I need the every hour a rendition by Apostle Jean Morris on the keyboard. Well, we praise God for this time of being able to share with you again from the Word of God. We're living in a very awesome time of communication and the abilities of being able to convey the mind of God to the believer. Yes, communication has exploded and it's going to get greater according to that which is predicted. Now that has a positive uh, item and also it has a threat because with communication that is not filtered there's the possibility of corruption exploding also. Corruption. The corrupting of minds has been one of the weapons against the kingdom of God. The scripture says evil communications corrupt good manners and in this day where the world has had a decrease in its volume of communications meaning that there is no limit now there was a time when people could only communicate if they had the apparatus that was needed on the other end, and many, many did not have it, such as the telegraph, even the telephone, and the television. But now, limitations have been decreased. In the United States, a person can receive a free, a free, totally free cell phone. They don't even have to buy it. So every person can be equipped to receive communication. Of course, in one way, that is a plus. But then in another way, it can cause the ownership, 
can cause damnation to souls. Someone may say, well, why are you saying that? Again, evil communications corrupt good manners. Not too long ago, there was an announcement made by people of alternative lifestyles. They announced that they were coming after children. Well, that communication did more than one thing. It not only informed the people, but there were also people that were taken into intimidation. Some were absorbed under a threat. There was probably some that were emboldened because they feel like now, well, I don't have to be careful. I can do what I want to do. So communication has a multi-facet uh, impact. The scriptures, though, have warned us. One of the greatest five-letter words that has been spoken by any person on the face of the earth. One of the greatest words is watch. Watch. In this day and time, we better watch. We have points of entrance, E-N-T-R-A-N-C-E. We have points of entrance that are connected with our body. And those points of entrance are also the entrance to our brain and our mind. And so, therefore, Lucifer has devised ways to enter the thoughts and the doings of people. So, when Jesus warned us to watch, we better watch what we allow to stay in our minds. Somebody said, well, how can we get rid of what we don't want? How can we get rid of what is evil? If we're going to follow Jesus and say, and, and uh, do as he said, watch, how can we get rid of that which is not good? The scripture has described the word of God. We are washed by the water of the word. Washing by the water of the word. The song that we open up with, I need thee every hour. We need him all 60 minutes of the hour. We need God. We need the word of God. And that's one reason why that we have been encouraged in the Bible to meditate. God help us. To meditate. Let our minds meditate on the word. So all of us, God help us all. We have got to, and I include myself, we must gird up the loins of our minds. We've got to get our minds strengthened the more. One way that we do it is through memorizing the word of God. Taking 
just one scripture and let it stay in our minds. Say it over and over in our thinking. It's a good thing sometimes that we just take the Bible and just read it. Just read it. Let the word of God come into our minds. And then we can listen to it. Listen to the word. We have got to allow the word to become more in our lives, more in our minds, more in our hearts, more in our thinking, more in our doings. The word of God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. So more than we absorb the word, we are absorbing God. You know, I love the word. I love God. And even as I'm speaking to you, the Bible said the husband man must be part, first partaker of the fruit. So let us all, and I include myself in this, let us all strengthen ourselves the more through absorbing more of the word of God. Of course, we are wise. Now, let me say this to those of you because all of us do not have the same company around us. Sometimes we have to let what we do as an individual be private, and so that is possible because you can wear a earplug. If you got Amen. Uh, situations, circumstances, responsibilities, and so on. Sometimes it's wise to wear your earplug. But let me say this to you. If you are married, you don't wear your earplug 24 hours a day. If you got children, you don't wear your earplug 24 hours a day. Both of those, a marriage relationship and when you are a parent, you need to be able to hear. So therefore, have a time for all things. Have a time to listen to the word. Have a time where you're open so that you can receive communication from whoever that you are with. If it's your husband or wife or your children or on your job and things of that sort, you know, it's rightly dividing what's said. That's that's the key. Don't take what I said about ne- needing the word, using the earplug, and then uh, say, well, you know, Apostle Morris said we're supposed to wear our earplug, and I got mine in. I don't care who around. No, you be wise. If you got a husband or a wife, you keep that earplug out while they're around you in, in a way of they need to communicate with you. Be wise. You need to listen to what your children are listening to. Listening to, Be wise. You know, the Holy Ghost is wonderful. So we be wise in what we do and how we do. But at the same time, particularly in our times that we can be private, our times that are, it's wise and within Amen. The right type of setting that we can just let the earplug stay in our ears. That's a good time to absorb the word. The word. And then also the scripture te- talks about how that we can uh, have songs and hymns in our presence. To listen to psalms and hymns. And good music that can soothe our soul too. That's good. Then you need the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. There's music that does generate joy. And usually that's gospel music. So therefore, we want to be, amen, mindful of what is happening in the earth realm. 5G is the fastness of communications, and someone has advocated 10G communication. 
AI is the communication of the sight being able to see another form of the same thing but in a more vivid way. Don't think that's not for a reason. As well as the fact, the communication of the hearing, the fastness, being able to get information to people. You know, what's happening, one thing that's happening is that the earth is being prepared for the advent of the Antichrist. The man of sin that will be endowed with satanic powers as no person has ever been. Not Napoleon, not any of the Caesars, not any of the other kings that were before the Caesars or during the time that they were on the earth. No king, no Caesar, no dictator, Hitler, and all of these, the one that's on now, Putin, he's going to die. But this man of sin that's going to appear, and God knows when, but to all evidence, it's not going to be no hundred years from now. So therefore, the earth is being prepared for the advent of the introduction of the Antichrist, when he will appear on every phone, every tablet, every computer with an announcement, and that announcement will be the onslaught of the Antichrist and the Great Tribulation. Then the world will be under the rulership of one man who will have the power of organization over most governments. Israel and hopefully hopefully the United States and maybe other countries that will stand with Israel will be not under his power totally. But the economy and different other things in the earth will be under his power. When the Lord permits, I'm going to be teaching concerning the end times and some of the things that are going to happen. And it's in preparation now. People are saying, well, we got time. I probably can make it through. I ain't got to worry about the rapture and all of that. Well, (laughs) That's foolishness, because if you can't live for Jesus now, you surely are going. I'm, I can't guarantee you what's going to go in your. It, that's going to happen to you in the great tribulation. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the time to live for God. Now, now. I say, Jesus. Spoil principalities and powers. But Jesus is a person that has to be received in our lives. And there are so many oppositions for people receiving Jesus now. And one thing is deception. They're deceivers. There are people that are talking about Jesus. They're not a bit more with Jesus than a man if he was in the moon. You see, so therefore we have to be wise. The scripture said, Behold, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation to live for the Lord. Now. Amen. And and we have been warned. No man knows neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall come. Praise the Lord. Let's prepare ourselves the more to be raptured. We shall not all sleep. Everybody not going to be dead when Jesus comes for the church. That's in the church. Some of us are going to be alive, and I hope I'm one of them. But however, amen, let's be ready when Jesus comes. 
If you are under the sound of my voice and you have not yet surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus, let me encourage you to do it today whenever you're listening to this podcast. And know that Jesus is the answer. He has been the answer and he is the answer for the world today. Amen. Oh, my God. Yes, I need the Lord. You need the Lord. We need Jesus. Yes, we do. We need him. All power in heaven and earth is in him. If you have not yet received him, repent and believe the gospel. Ask the Lord to forgive you for anything that you've done that didn't please him. Ask him to come into your life completely and fully, and he will. God, in the name of Jesus, I lose your power now over listeners that do not yet have you in their lives in the fullness. Bless us all, Lord, to surrender the more to you and to receive you the more. In the name of Jesus, and we'll give you the glory, and we will say that you have done it in Jesus' name. Well, beloved, I ask you to send a donation as we go forward in spreading the gospel and upholding the gospel and preparing others to be gospel preachers and teachers through our online and in-person school. You may send your donation by way of cash out, dollar sign, Apostle G. Morris, men. Amen. God bless you until next time.